Welcome to part three in the Leptin for Layman series. Claire here with you again today to talk about the next step in leptin resistance. In the last video, we went through what happens in the first 24 hours of life and how this helps to set up an energy system that is appropriate for your environment, how modern eating patterns have a negative effect on leptin sensitivity, what happens when you develop leptin resistance in your hypothalamus, liver and muscles, how this begins a spiral of doom when it comes to your health, and why it can become a struggle to get out of bed, let alone trying to work, maintain relationships, exercise, lose weight and feel good. So at this point, when leptin resistance has started to occur in the hypothalamus, liver and muscles, things aren't looking too good at all. You're going to need some help just to get the day-to-day -day stuff done. We set our alarm clocks to basically scare us out of bed in the mornings, and this sets a precedence for the whole day. We start recruiting two superheroes to combat the fatigue our body is feeling. The first of these superheroes is our thyroid. This is the one we're going to be looking at in today's video. Your thyroid is a bit like the accelerator in your car. If your body is beautifully balanced, when you put your foot down you go faster. But if things are off, like leptin resistance, then the thyroid has to work at full throttle just to move at a regular pace. Remember how in the last video we were filling up the boot with jerry cans of extra fuel? Well, the extra effort of driving those around all the time is going to require more pressure on the accelerator than if the boot was empty, right? When cortisol is high, the thyroid goes into overdrive to speed up metabolism, to allow you to do the day-to-day -day stuff. This is generally only a short-term solution, and what happens next is what drives you to become overweight, constantly tired and vulnerable to illness. We're going to look at the process of how some of the most commonly diagnosed disorders occur. These are often all lumped under the banner of hypothyroidism. So the pituitary gland, which is the neighbour to the hypothalamus, produces a hormone called thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH. This goes to the thyroid to stimulate the production of two other hormones. These are T4 and T3. The thyroid makes about 20% of TSH into T3, which is the active hormone that tells cells that they can use energy as fuel. The other 80% is made into T4, which is like the backup hormone. It sort of helps kick in the metabolism a bit, but it's not anywhere near as active as T3. But it has the ability to be converted into T3 when the body needs more energy. If you think of this like a power plant, when you might have some people on shift, the T3s, and a whole lot of people on call, these are your T4s, in case there's a big demand for power. Now the body has a backup plan in case things are not going so well, say in the case there's a drought and a bad famine. In a time of crisis, it's really important for survival that metabolism is slowed right down to keep the basic functions going until things go back to normal. In a way, it's a little bit like going into hibernation. There are two ways this can happen. The first occurs when cortisol, one of the major stress hormones, is high. We will explain that fully in the next video. The second is a cool little function of our thyroid hormones. As normal, TSH is made into enough T3 to perform basic functions. This is the 20%. The rest is made into T4. When leptin signaling in the hypothalamus occurs and the message is that things are not good, the body wants to slow things down a bit. So rather than converting T4 into T3, it gets made into reverse T3. The role of reverse T3 is to bind with the T3 receptors and do nothing but stop T3 hormones acting on the cell. So back to our power plant. Imagine there's a strike at the coal mine and supplies are getting really low. The mayor has declared a state of emergency and says that households can only take a little bit of power so that the hospital and emergency services can continue to function. The regular T3 workers come to work to keep the essential places supplied with power. Because no one wants to go without power, some of the backup workers, the T4 workers, want to come in and just keep the plant going at full throttle. So the mayor comes up with a cunning plan. He finds the laziest T4 workers and tells them that they need to come into work. Once they're there, he convinces them all to sit at the empty workstation and play cards. These are your reverse T3 workers. This means there's no space for the active workers to come in and work. Each station is not creating any energy that would be wasted by households. The whole time, everyone is yelling out for more coal so that the power can go back on again. Okay, so this is perfect when things are really bad. This keeps the vital organs alive and functioning while minimising the amount of energy being spent by the muscles, ligaments, joints, even in the digestive tract including the stomach, large and small intestines. It also greatly reduces the amount of energy being spent in the sex organs, 
There's no point reproducing if the environment isn't favourable for a baby to survive. Very few Westerners face true famine, but what most of us do face is leptin resistance. Remember how we mentioned the way that the brain gauges the energy status of the body by leptin binding with the hypothalamus? If the hypothalamus is not sensitive to leptin, then the message that comes through is, we're in famine. This is why reverse T3 levels relate so closely with leptin sensitivity. If your reverse T3 is high, you have a leptin problem. If you have a problem with too much body fat, when you eat, you produce high levels of leptin. Remember, leptin is made in the white fat cells, but you also have a low sensitivity to leptin, so your body will register that you are in crisis and you need to eat more. This signal also tells the body to convert T4 into reverse T3 to slow the metabolism down. This will increase your cortisol levels, which in turn will make you feel even more hungry and give you strong cravings for easy energy, which means sugar and refined carbohydrates. If they aren't forthcoming, the body will start looking for the most available fuel source that won't use up too many of the stores set aside for essential functions. This comes in the form of muscle fibres. Back to our power plant. The people are starting to get restless about having no power and choose to continue on with life by sneaking energy from essential services. The T3 workers are trying to keep the place pumping out enough energy, so they start using anything that will burn. This includes pulling down some of the houses and factories to use the materials as fuel. They figure these houses will never get the power switched back on, so they're pretty much useless anyway. May as well make the town smaller so there's less to try and provide energy to. For you, the result is this. Your body starts breaking down muscle fibres when glucose stores run out, which happens pretty quickly because the muscle cells are leptin resistant and cannot uptake glucose properly. This burning of glucose and protein from muscle tissue brings in a new element of degeneration to the body. The mitochondria, which provide the fuel for cell function, become leaky, creating what is called ROS, or reactive oxygen species. ROS isn't your friend, not at all. You've probably heard of antioxidants and how they're vital for your health. Well, antioxidants combat the damage caused by ROS and your leaky mitochondria. So what does he actually do? ROS damages DNA and cell membranes. Now your genes have a protective mechanism called telomeres to try and stop ROS altering genes themselves. These telomeres are basically pieces of DNA that soak up extra reactive oxygen particles so they don't bond with vital genes. The longer your telomeres are, the longer your life expectancy is. Also remember back to the first video and we spoke about the importance of the cell membrane for signalling which genes need to be expressed. When ROS damages the membrane, these messages can get pretty messed up. Damaged genes and poor gene expression is the beginning of some very serious diseases, including cancer. Let's just sum up the last few videos and start putting the pieces together. Leptin is produced in our white fat cells. It signals fullness after eating. It also lets the brain know how much energy the body has and which functions it will be able to continue to perform. Modern birth practices, our modern diet, the times and frequencies that we eat, and loss of true circadian rhythm all disrupt leptin sensitivity. Leptin resistance in the hypothalamus, liver and muscles send us into a tailspin of low energy, weight gain, insulin resistance, carbohydrate craving and thyroid dysfunction. In the next video we'll be looking at the role our adrenals play in keeping us going and how that leads us further down a path of poor health and disease. Thanks for watching.